We are back. It is time for fight number two in our Townsfolk Tussle run, going through the new expansions, Foul Neighbors, and Odd Jobs here on Tabletop Simulator. Um, the Kickstarter is now live since the 14th. Big congrats to Panic Roll for a super, super successful campaign already. They got funded in just like a couple hours, I think it was. Um, so if you want to make sure to check out all the new re daily reveals as well as stretch goals and things like that, you can check the, check out the link in the description below for the Kickstarter. Um, I'm super, super stoked for it. Some of the new ruffians look, the ones that I did not get to see or play with in the preview sampler, uh, they look super, super cool. I'm especially interested to see, I can't remember their name, but it's the guy that has like the face ripped off. Um, that one looks very, very fun. Um, but I actually was recording this earlier my recording got corrupted or whatever during the town phase. So unfortunately I will not be able to show, show you exactly what happened during the town phase. I'll talk about what happened though. So first off, I did draw some new feats of metal for characters. So Frigid Jones now has Grand Sacrifice, uh, Multitasker and Masochist, which is all terrain related things. So funny enough, um, very funny uh, for that to match up. Uh, Judy Marks got Unshakable, Confident Walloper, and also Armored, which we did succeed successfully get in the town phase where we got a, a piece of headgear, the Mouth Heart. Um, so we got some coins for that. And then Quintus got Bard, Nimble Trader, and Doctor, which pretty much we're not going to get. I didn't really want to sell anything, so I didn't get Nimble Trader. And I didn't want to get an instrument because uh, the shop this time around wasn't the greatest, but we did pick up th some things. Uh, in terms of town events, um, I actually did get with uh, Frigid, um, no, not Frigid, uh, who was it? Quintus. Um, Quintus drew the one that lets him, where is it, force exchange. He drew this one uh, where all t other townsfolk may exchange one piece of gear, or their gear for one piece of your gear, which actually worked out because it allowed Frigid to trade for the charged shield. Uh, which she can't really use uh, at the moment. Um, we just need to get one more moxie for her. Unfortunately, there wasn't really any good uh, items for her to bump, bump up her moxie. She can still negate some damage, though, during the fight. Um, but also the more important thing was Quintus gets a much better weapon, which we traded uh, for the Cloud Caller for, for that Frigid got in the last fight. Um, because now that uh, Quintus has plus one moxie, thanks to the baby's bib, um, that actually allows him to use it. So he's going to be a really, really big offensive person. Um, he could potentially do three damage in a turn. Uh, we just got to be careful not to hit any of our friends with this extra ability on, on, on this one. The nice thing is it's range four, which is really going to help out in this fight and staying out of the flood. Um, because we are fighting a Tartar Fish Boy as our uh, next fight. Uh, which he's a very, very, like I mentioned in my first impressions video, um, probably, probably mechanically my friends and mine's favorite fight. Um, other town events, unfortunately, Frigid got screwed over, ended up getting agoraphobia. Uh, so she has to stay beside or inside terrain. Otherwise she's going to take a damage every turn. Luckily this, uh, battle, there's going to be a ton of terrain pieces around. So that one actually isn't the worst one to get in this fight, but could have been much worse. Um, and then Judy got Dying Gift, which essentially is a buy one, get one free. She ended up purchasing a Mouth Harp and getting the uh, Rocking Horse for free alongside that with that town event. And then uh, we also did pick up a piece of leg gear for Quintus to bump up his max HP. And uh, uh, like I said, we didn't really get too much because there wasn't really anything useful for Frigid. Her, all of her weapon uh, slots and accessory slots are being used and there wasn't really any good head or leg gear, unfortunately. But now we have Tartar Fish Boy. Tartar Fish Boy is going to be starting in the flood right here. This one's this one on tabletop simulator is probably going to be a little bit annoying, just dealing with all the flood pieces. Um, but let's read Tartar Fish Boy's lore. Tartar once uh, worked happily alongside his twin brother as a fisherman in Eureka Springs, but he had a dark secret: an insatiable hunger for more than just fish. After one too many townsfolk went missing near Tartar's pond, the old sheriff connected the dots and exiled him. Since then, Tartar has honed his fishing skills in the waterways of Sprinkle Falls, consuming passerbys foolish enough to chase his bait. With word of the old sheriff's demise, Tartar was eager to return to Eureka Springs and see his old and now unprotected neighbors. Just look at the size of that lad now. A steady diet of townsfolk really does wonders for the body. And we are fighting on the second fight, so hooligan ability is activated, which hopefully I don't forget here. If a townsfolk does not end their movement inside flood terrain when being moved by lure in, they take one damage. And lure in is part of Tartar's um, ambush card. 
So there's going to be, he's going to reference this card in his abilities. So if it says cast, we're going to be placing the bait terrain piece adjacent to the townsfolk farthest from Tartar, which is this little sandwich with the hook in it. If he, if it has slur in, it's going to move the bait and all townsfolk within three squares of it, three squares towards Tartar. And if there's thrash, he places a water token on all non-flood squares within two squares of Tartar. And essentially those are the small squares we were using for wet tokens. That's those double up as the flood tokens as well. Um, and if a townsfolk ends their turn inside a flood square, they take one damage, which, uh, yeah, it's going to be annoying for hooligan, uh, pretty much almost always taking a damage one way or another. Um, we also have dangerous ditch, vegetable patch, deserted picnic, overgrown cornfield and hidey haystack. But I think that is going to be it. I already have everyone placed up. We have Frigid adjacent with, Ju excuse me, with Judy here because they have abilities that go along with people who are adjacent. And then Quintus is now last in the beaten order, which is a little bit unfortunate because he is our hard hitter, but it is what it is. So we have to make sure to be a little bit cautious. The nice thing is that at least two of our characters do have uh, weapons that... Uh, have range associated with him, so we can actually hit him while he's in the flood, at least for the first little bit. But either way, uh, Tartar Fishboy goes first. He's got 17 health and 9 movement. Tartar gets Tidal Surge. Farthest Townsfolk, that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, it's either Judy or um, Quintus. So we're going to roll off. Lois gets targeted. So we're going to roll for left to right. For, uh, you know, left to right on, on our screen here so judy marks goes first gets an eight and quintus gets a 10 so it's gonna be judy Ooh. Uh, judy's the weaker one um move tartar towards the target tartar may enter non-flood squares during this movement um oh that is one thing that uh is that tartar has to stick to the flood the flood tokens uh yeah he's waterbound cannot move or be moved out of flood squares unless otherwise stated um, except for this ability, of course. <laughs> Place a water token on all non-flood squares Tartar enters during this movement. Deal one damage to any townsfolk that collides with Tartar, then deal one damage to all adjacent townsfolk. He's going to then lure in, then cast. Yowza. So he's going to go one, two, three. He's going to make water tokens on these two squares. Luckily, those are a little bit smaller, so they're a little bit easier to deal with. He's then going to deal a damage to Quintus. Um, yeah, we don't want to unequip our baby's bib unless absolutely necessary. But luckily, that muddy boots helped us a little bit. Um, okay, and then he's going to lure in and then cast. So lure in means move the bait and all townsfolk within three squares of it towards Tartar. Um, one, two, three, four. It was only Quintus and the bait's just going to get moved because uh, Quintus is already adjacent as close as he can be. And then uh, cast, place the bait terrain piece adjacent to the townsfolk farthest from Tartar. So it's going to end up over here. And we'll do it like this. Um, but because of Hooligan, if a townsfolk does not end their movement inside flood terrain, when being moved by lure in, they take one damage. Um, now since we're already adjacent, we didn't move. So would that count, I wonder? So the townsfolk does not end their movement inside flood terrain when being moved. They take one damage. Move the bait and all townsfolk within three squares of it. Three squares towards Tartar. Uh, I'll, I'll just call it. Yeah. We'll, we'll just say it counts. We'll go down to three. Make it harder on ourselves. Why not? Uh, I'd rather make it harder on myself when I don't know the, the final ruling. Well, that was a shitty start to the turn. Um, unfortunately... Quintus is last, but Frigid goes first. So I think what we're going to do is we are going to go... We're going to... Oh, we, don't have enough, we don't have enough Moxie to hide Quintus and heal him and attack. So we're just going to go one, two, three, four, uh, five. 
We're going to use hide inside for one Moxie and remove Quintus from the board. Uh, then we're going to use our ice pack for one Moxie, our last Moxie, to heal him one and go back to four. Um, and that's going to be our turn. Uh, we don't want to use big boy energy yet because we want to save that for when we're actually planning on attacking because we'll get an extra damage with our wooden spoon when we consume for a turn. Um, oh, we actually want to be here. So we'll go one, two, three. Um, and I guess we'll go... Uh, I guess we'll stay there. Um, yeah, we, we have to stay by these flood tokens, the the terrain pieces, because of stupid, stupid agoraphobia. Um, all right, well, that's going to be it for Frigid. So Judy's going to go next. Uh, I guess we're just going to... Um, how do we want to do this? Yeah, we'll go one, two, three. We're going to... Use one Moxie to give Hero's Journey to Frigid. So Frigid now can move, immediately move up to four squares, and if they end the movement adjacent to the Ruffian, uh, the Ruffian takes one damage. So we're going to go one, two, three, just so we're still by the Ruffian to take a damage, or to give a damage, but also... Um, whoops. Keeps us by the terrain pieces. Um, so that'll bump up our accuracy by one, thanks to Giant Paintbrush's ability. And then we'll use our last action to attack, uh, and we're hitting on a five plus, thanks to that plus two accuracy we currently have. Ooh, as an eight, that is almost a four, almost a miss, but that's still gonna be a damage, so that's gonna be a successful hit. Um, oh, and Confident Walloper, unfortunately, only triggers when we deal two plus damage with a weapon. So that's unfortunate, but that's okay. Um, that is going to be it. Uh, let's actually also deploy our rocking horse. Ooh, we do have to be careful though. Um, let's place it. Yeah, because you want to make sure that it doesn't get covered by the flood tokens, because the flood tokens will uh, make that. Uh, Thing, lose all effects and interactions. Well, actually, other terrain... It's not a terrain piece, though, is it? I actually don't know if the deployables are considered terrain pieces. I'll play it like it is. It makes the most sense that it would just flood that and get rid of it. Um, so I'll place it here, because uh, Quintus's sword actually does do... does have range four. One, two, three. Yeah, so you can hit from there. Uh, one, two, three. And then actually we'll, actually we'll have Judy, because Judy has less health than Quintus, so we'll do that. Just so we can discard unaccom unaccomplished feats to negate some damage. Uh, all right, start of Quintus's turn, he's going to pop back out. We'll put him right here. And we're going to go one, two, three. We'll go here. And attack from here with our cloud caller because it costs all of our moxie to do so. Um, but we get to hit on a four plus. That's a success. Five plus is two damage with this beefy weapon. Next point is a breaking point. Um, not a bad start to the turn. Not bad at all. Oh, let's uh, let's also place deployable trebuchet. Just in case we might want to use that as well, or someone else can use it if they have an extra moxie to spend. Uh, all right, Tartar Fish Boy's turn. Shining Lure, farthest townsfolk. One, uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. All right, tie between Judy and Quintus again. So Judy rolls a six. Quintus rolls a six. Judy rolls a three. Quintus rolls a one. Oh, Quintus again. Quintus is getting beaten down. Uh, so he's going to cast if the bait is placed on a non-flood square, put a water token on that square, then put a water token on each non-flood square adjacent to the bait. Move Tartar towards the target. All right, it's not lure in, so hooligan ability does not go off, but he's going to cast. So place the bait terrain piece uh, adjacent to the townsfolk farthest from Tartar. Um, again, that is going to be another tie because they're both considered farthest. Judy gets a nine. Quintus gets a nine. Judy gets a four. 
Quintus gets a three. Um, so it's gonna be Quintus again. Uh, so let's see. Uh, yeah, so we have to place on a non-flood. Uh, I guess we want to keep things. We want to keep the flood, I guess, disconnected. Oof. Uh, and flood, we take a damage at the beginning of, of Townsfolk's turn if they start their turn inside of it. Ooh. That's not good. Because if I go here, that's gonna that's going to actually. Oh, it's only adjacent, right? So diagonals actually wouldn't count. So we can place it here. Um, now if I place it here, it it won't get the trebuchet, and it'll only hit uh, Quintus. Quintus is gonna need some healing though. So let's get one here. Boop, boop, boop. All right. And then move towards the target. Uh, but unfortunately, there's no flood tokens there, so he cannot because he is uh, waterbound. So that is good. Uh, so we can keep him there for, for now, at least. Um, we'd have to be a little bit worried. The next thing is going to be... Oh, I can actually save Quintus from the Flood with Frigid's ability, because Frigid actually does go first. Actually, good that she goes first. Um, all right, Frigid is going to go, um, and Frigid is going to go... Yeah, we don't want to hit him and trigger the breaking point with Frigid. So I think we're going to go one, two, three. We're going to use one Moxie to suck up Quintus, saving him from the Flood. And Frigid's ability is so good. I think out of the two new townsfolk, she's definitely the stronger one. Just just a lot more... Well, actually, they're both really, really strong. I think Frigid just has a lot more consistency. Judy Marks just has, like, big spikes in power, right? Um, funny enough, I could actually take a damage purposefully to get an extra moxie for the fight if I wanted to. But I don't think we're going to do that. Uh, all right, we're going to use our second Moxie to heal Quintus back up to full. So he's back up to his five max HP. And one, two, three. We're going to go four. Uh, we can't go, we can't get back there. So I guess I'll just stay here. So we are, uh, two, three. Yeah, it doesn't really matter where I go. One, two, three, four, five, I guess I could go. Got to stay by those train pieces. Stupid man, Agoraphobia is really gonna. Uh, it's probably my least one of my least favorite train pe uh, tra uh, town event cards. Uh, all right, Judy Marks is gonna go. So Judy, I think we're just going to chill here. Yeah, let's just chill here and attack with our paintbrush, hitting on a five plus. We got to leave Quintus out at one point to give him. Uh, Focus friend, which would be nice. Next accuracy is a success successful hit, regardless of roll. I guess we could also give it to Frigid, though. We, we, yeah, let's give it to Frigid. Let's just move one. We're going to spend one Moxie to give uh, Focus friend to Frigid, because Frigid can still do two damage once she drinks big boy energy. So next hit's going to be a successful hit, regardless of roll. And then we're going to move back onto here, because it's going to trigger the breaking point as well. Um... Which Quintus is actually safe from, because he's actually not going to be around for the breaking point, assuming we hit. All right, uh, our accuracy goes up another one because we uh, gave another painting. So we're hitting on a four plus. That's a seven. That's going to be a successful hit. So one damage, breaking point. Turn ends, and Tartar goes again. Skull grab. Closest townsfolk. Uh, that is going to be Frigid. Move Tartar towards the target. If the target is within three squares, deal one damage. Oh. He can't move though, because he's water water bound. Nice. Oh, but he's within she is within three squares though, so still takes the damage. Wah wah. After effect, the target may discard their equipped headgear to avoid this after effect. Ooh, we have no headgear. Oh no, if not, Tartar flings the target over his shoulder, place them on one of the squares directly behind Tartar. No, into the flood. Oh, Shoot. 
Well, that's... That's not what I wanted. One of the downsides to Tabletop Simulator can be a little bit finicky when it comes to stacked stuff. Um, let's go here. I could actually draw things away. We would lose out on the trebuchet, but we could go to the vegetable patch to fight so people can get an extra heal. Because, uh... Once per fight, yeah, each townsfolk. All right. Well, that only happens at the beginning of the turn, right? Now, I don't know the ordering of things because uh, Frigid Jones's ability um, place any hiding townsfolk adjacent to you before removing. Uh, no, wait. Uh, hiding townsfolk are placed adjacent to you at the start of their turn. I'm going to say that that protects Quintus for his turn. We're playing the other stuff the the more negative way. I think this way makes more sense that this protective ability would be like super protective. Um, but that's gonna be Judy's turn. So Qu Quintus is gonna start. He's gonna avoid the flood, but he is gonna pop out. So we're definitely gonna want to move. Uh, let's pop out here. I should just pop out here, because I think, yeah, we're going to spread things around. Because uh, the trebuchet can hit 10 squares away. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, even if we're fighting in, on this side, we can maybe have Judy, Judy just stay here and just keep using the trebuchet, to be honest. Um, all right, Quitches is going to pop up. And we are going to just attack. Yeah, use all of our moxie. We're hitting on a four plus. Oh, it's a one, and we don't have enough Moxie to re-roll that, unfortunately. We need a lot of Moxie for that. All right, we're going to go one, two, and we don't need any more healing. So we go three, four, five. Start backing up. Actually, let's not go all the way over there, just in case we need to run over to Judy or something. Um, Damn, I really needed the two damage there. All right, uh, Tartar's turn. Uh, let me just see. Yeah, we haven't done any lure ends yet. Um, farthest townsfolk not standing in a flood square. One, two, three. That's going to be Quintus. The stream created by Tartar comes crashing down in your direction. Range attack. If it's within eight squares, put a water token on the target square and all non-flood squares within two squares of the target, then move Tartar towards the target. Uh-oh. That's bad. I think we just ended up getting rid of the uh, vegetable patch because any other terrain pieces in that square lose all effectiveness. All effects and interaction. Now, other terrain pieces in that square. Does that just mean it take, only takes one flood token to negate the effects of the whole vegetable patch? I don't, th I don't think that's how it would work, huh? I'm guessing it would only mean the, the places that actually do have the flood tokens on them. In that square. Well, actually, no. Other terrain pieces. So this counts as one terrain piece. So that piece is in that square. So it would lose all effects. Oh, shoot. All right. Well, that's a little bit annoying. Um, Within two squares... Wow, that's a lot. That's a really, really bad one. Actually, that wouldn't go because that's three squares. One, two, three, that's three squares. Um, yeah, so it'd just be like that. And then Tartar is going to go one. Actually, it would displace Bridget. One, two, three, four. And move up like that. Um, well, at least there's no damage. It just creates a lot of flood. Um, well, <laughs> he's, we can't save him. Well, we can save him for a turn, I guess. All right, well, it's Frigid's turn. Frigid takes a damage at the start of her turn. Oh, already down to two. But we did get Mazochist, so we get uh, four coins or a Moxie for the fight. I don't think we really need it. Extra moxie. 
We could do Grand Sacrifice, actually, during this fight, too, and do T damage to the Ruffian. Actually, I feel like we are going to do that at some point. Um, so, let's see. Yeah, let's get two coins. So we can go one, two, three, four, five, and save Quintus from taking damage. But that's not great. Uh, I think we're just going to go one, two, three, four. We're going to use the trebuchet hitting on a... Well, actually, no, that would count as... Oh, yeah, we don't really want to do that. One, two, three, four. Am I just going to go super aggro? Maybe I just do Sacrifice Frigid <laughs> and just go super offensive. Because unfortunately, we can't really get out of this. We can go one, two, attack, three, four. Actually, no, no, we can. So we can go one, two. We automatically hit with our next attack thanks to the Focus Friend we got, but we still roll for just getting the crit potentially. I'm going to consume Big Boy Energy, so Wooden Spoon does do an extra damage for this turn. All right. Still hits. So it's going to be two damage. Um, would hit regardless, which is nice. And then we're going to use the rest of our movement three, four, five to be beside the train, but not in the flood. All right. Uh, Judy's turn. Judy. Don't need healing, so I want to wait to give this third painting away. I think we're just going to... One, two, three, four. We can actually need to move one. So we can go one up. We can attack from here. We'll attack with our giant paintbrush, hitting on a five, uh, four plus. Oh, that does not do it, but we do have enough moxie to reroll. We'll spend two moxie. We'll have one left over. Reroll. That's going to be a success. A five is one damage. And we have one Moxie left. I moved one. So then we're going to go two, three, four, five. Oh, we only have four Moxie. Shoot. Dang. And that, yeah, we have to be in this position because otherwise I would have gone over to the Trebuchet and activated that as well for another damage. Dang. That, that's unfortunate. Um, oh, actually, I can use Mouth Heart, Mouth Heart, uh, Mouth Heart with my last Moxie. Doesn't get Quintus out, though. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, even if I sucked Quintus up. Well, actually, no, that would have... Would have saved Quintus, but it would have damaged... Would have left Frigid in the Flood. Um, I guess we'll just spend our last Moxie to, yeah, use uh, Mouth Heart. All other towns on the board may immediately move one space. I will also jump back on the Rocking Horse before our turn is done. We'll have Frigid go like that. And then we'll have Quintus go... Actually, no, we want... Actually, no, Quintus isn't on a uh, flood piece because I don't think that placed it... Oh, no, it does place it on the target square. All right, yeah, we'll have Quintus go this way, so it's a little bit easier. Um, All right, that's going to be it for Judy. All right, Quintus's turn. Quintus is going to start his turn, take a damage. Uh, we are going to just attack with our... Well, actually, it's going to be a breaking point, so actually, let's move... One, two, three. We can attack from here, which is in a flood square. And... Yeah, let's spend uh, all of our moxie. That's going to be a successful hit. That's two damage. It's going to be a breaking point. It was just going to go twice in a row. A little bit scary. Having Heaving pull. Closest townsfolk is going to be... Ooh, it's frigid. Shoot. Cast, then lure in. Place the bait token adjacent to the townsfolk farthest from Tartar. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three. That's going to be uh, Judy. So we'll place it there. Then it's going to be Lure in. If only a single townsfolk was moved by Lure in, trigger the after effect. Otherwise, move towards tar uh, target. Oh. Townsfolk moved by Lure in is stuck on the bait's hook and Tartar tucks hard. Place the bait on one of the two squares behind Tartar. Then place the townsfolk moved by Lure in adjacent to the bait. Um, actually, he would have turned around because this is it's targeting Judy. 
Uh, so do we want the after effect or just have him move? Oh, wait, sorry. Closest townsfolk. That's frigid. What am I saying? I just said that too. <laughs> uh, well, I could have it only target frigid. Which then the town token move I learn is stuck in, uh, so it placed on the, one of the two squares behind Tartar. Then place the town so moved by lure in adjacent to the bait. I mean, either way, it puts Frigid in a. Oh, uh, Frigid might die here. Either way, it puts Frigid in a flood square. And I don't think I really want to move Judy. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just, uh... Well, actually... No, I, I, th I think we'll, we will have Frigid and Judy go. Um... Because Lure in... If a Townsfolk does not end their movement inside a Flood Terrain when being moved by Lure and they take a damage, that's going to be taking a damage regardless. So we just won't have the after effect go. So move... Uh, the bait and all townsfolk within three squares of it. Three squares towards Tartar. So Bridget goes here. One, two, three. And that would end up like that. Uh, and that would essentially end the turn. Um, but it's Tartar's turn again. That was breaking point. Take the bait. Lure in again. Then each townsfolk within three squares of the bait must roll, adding their max moxie. Uh, well, nothing changes there, but that is going to be um, Frigid. So Frigid gets to roll plus two. Seven. Oh, the bait is within reach. You give it a nibble and Tartar tugs hard. Lure in again. Oh, well, that's not the worst. Um, so it's, that just means if we are really, really far away, he could pull us very, very far in. Um, all right, Judy's turn. Oof, rolls a six. She has plus four, too. Um, that's just going to be the same thing. Yeah. Luckily, it doesn't really change much. Then move Tartar towards the closest townsfolk. Already there. Um, all right, well, it's Frigid's turn. Frigid takes a damage at the start of the turn, <laughs> going down to one. I actually sort of want her to get killed by Grand Sacrifice now, rather than getting killed by the uh, Ruffian directly. Um... So I can save Judy from taking a damage. But her taking damage actually gives her accuracy for the fight. Um, yeah, let's... How do we want to do this? It's already down to 7 health. So we're actually doing pretty well. Let's... Uh, we can also, once per fight, prevent all damage dealt to you or an adjacent townsfolk from a ruffian action. Then you have three Moxie. The Ruffian takes damage equal to the amount prevented. Unfortunately, you do not have three Moxie. And Happy's place only goes off, gives us plus two Moxie for the turn. Um, either way, we're still going to just attack, I think. We don't need to heal. We could heal Quintus, I guess. One. Oh, no, we can't get there. Two, three, four. Oh, we can't get there, but we're stuck in a Flood token. Which, again, I guess we sort of want... I mean, I, I think I want to get use, a use at a charge shield first, so maybe not. Um, but we do want to spend one Moxie to suck up Judy. Just to make sure she can get out of the uh, flood. And then we're going to spend another Moxie to attack with our wooden spoon, hitting on a 5+, plus because we have minus 1 accuracy, unfortunately. That's going to be a 2. Not enough Moxie to reroll, unfortunately. Um, and then we're just going to use a movement and go one, two, three, four. Oh, we can't be on the, the, yeah, we can't be on the horse to reduce damage. I guess we'll just chill here. Yeah, we'll just chill there. Um, all right, started Judy's turn. Judy's going to pop out here. We're going to have Judy... Ooh, actually... 
We're gonna go here. We suck up Judy. Go one, two, three, four, five. Because then I could prevent potential damage from us getting damaged by the ruffian with my shield and then just sacrifice myself at the start of her turn and do two damage. Yeah, let's do that. We're just going to make the ultimate sacrifice. So we would have sucked up, attacked, go one, two, three, four, um, five, which means Judy can, at the start of her turn, can get spat out there. And Judy can then attack from here. But also... Yeah. Yeah, Judy can attack from here. We won't give our third painting away until we need to heal ourselves. Uh, we're hitting on a 4+. plus. That's going to be easy hits. So that's one damage. And then we're going to go... 1, 2, 3, 4... Actually, let's just go way over here. One, two, three, four. Stay out of the flood if we can. Um, all right, it is going to be Quintus's turn. Quintus is going to just attack from here, I guess. Same thing. One, two, three. Oh, actually, maybe I should have given a. Yeah, maybe I should have given a painting away. Because we get plus two extra movement, but also. It would allow Quintus to reroll if he needs to, but I think we can we could probably save that for a turn. All right, we're hitting on a four plus. That's a seven. That's going to be two damage. It's going to be a breaking point. He's going to go twice again, so this is going to be rough. Tug of War. Cast, and if there is a townsfolk within three squares of the bait uh, with four plus moxie, trigger the after effect. Ooh. Okay, well, hopefully it's not bad. Um, farthest townsfolk is going to be Judy. And then... Oh, but Judy does have four plus Moxie, thanks to Flashy Buckle. So he won't lure in then. After effect, the townsfolk near the bait resist the urge to eat it, but instead tugs it as hard as they can. Tartar, unable to handle the townsfolk's brute strength, is yanked straight out of the water. Trigger the ruffian's weakness and remove this card from the game. Hell yeah. The weakness is... Flop and fish. Move Tartar three squares towards the bait. He may enter non-flood squares during this movement. Put a water token on each non-flood square uh, during this movement. He skips his next action. Hell yeah. So he moves three squares towards the bait. So we can go one, two... Actually, we, can go, we want to go... Um, where is he? One... We want to push... We can push uh, Frigid out of the water to... Actually, no, we, we, we do want Frigid to sacrifice herself. Yeah, so it'll be one, two, three, and that'll be a water token there. Because we're almost, we're almost there. We could actually kill him this turn. So um, he skips his next action, so his actual turn now, he's going to skip. So Frigid is going to, at the start of her turn, she's going to get killed and die but she's going to make the grand sacrifice for two damage. One, two. And then it is going to be Judy's turn. Judy is going to go one, two. She's going to give her last painting away to uh, Quintus. So Quintus gets plus three movement and plus two moxie during his turn, which is allow him to reroll, allows him to reroll his attack if he misses. And then we're going to also attack, uh, hitting on a four plus. That is a critical. We could actually kill him here. Um, we are looking for an eight. That is a one. Your turn ends immediately after attack, and the ruffian takes an action. Uh, the one thing I hate about the critical table. And unfortunately, I don't believe you can reroll critical critical roll table rolls. Uh, all towns work within one square of a flood terrain. Tartar grabs the ankles of anyone within reach. Move one square. Uh, move each target one square uh, into the nearest flood square. Uh, that's impossible for Judy because Tartar is taking up that space. Quintus gets thrown in there though. Then move Tartar towards the closest townsfolk. If that townsfolk is within three squares, they take one damage. Uh, well, it's going to be Judy, so Judy takes a damage, which is fine. She can heal. Oh wait, she already gave her. 
she already gave her painting away. Damn it. Uh, but she does get another accuracy for the fight because she took a damage. That's cool. Um, all right. Well, it's Quintus's turn. Quintus is just going to take a damage at the start of his turn because he's in a flood square. I think we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. And we're going to go one, two, three, four. Our sword can attack from four squares away. So yeah, we are going to uh, attack with three Moxie. That's going to be a four. That is exactly what we needed. That's going to be two damage, and that is going to be a dead Tartar. Nice. We actually dodged quite a few lure in, so luckily his uh, hooligan ability didn't trigger too much. Um, Frigid was MVP, being able to save people from the Flood and also that Grand Sacrifice, which, to be honest, we didn't really need. Um, we, did, we didn't really need Frigid to die. Um, so Frigid actually won't be able to, funny enough, who was the one who completed the most town events, won't be able to get anything. Um, Agoraphobia was really, really annoying, but that's done. Um, sweet. So everyone gets six coins. And Judy's the only one, other one that completed something. Yeah, because Quintus isn't, wasn't going to be able to get any of his stuff. Uh, so Judy completed that one. Where did you complete these? So we get the choice of, well, not the choice, the random choice of Backfin, Organic Rod, and Hooked Bait Witch. Backfin, Organic Rod. Let's give these a shuffle. And we get Organic Rod. Didn't really want a new weapon. Was sort of hoping for an accessory. Um, melee 200 spear, two moxie to use, four plus accuracy, one damage, range seven. Holy moly, sniper. On a successful hit, pull the ruffian up to four squares towards you, then if the ruffian is adjacent to you, they take one damage. I mean, does more damage than our giant paintbrush, and the accuracy's easier to hit with right off the get-go. Let's also get our stats back to where they should be. Uh, that's all correct. Give the paintings back to Judy. And get our deployables back on our card as well. Um, Yeah. That's, a, that's actually a decent upgrade. I'm, I'm happy with that. So we'll do that there. Uh, Cool. That wasn't uh, too bad. The fact that we have a two damage weapon now is huge. And there's quite a few times where we can get two plus damage in a single round with people. Um, now we have two people with two, effectively two damage weapons. So that's really, really good. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty sweet. Organic Rod can potentially really help us with terrain pieces like um, the ones that damage the Ruffian. Like Beehive and things like that. Or pull, pull the Ruffian into an outhouse where that can do two damage with rigid attacking it rather than one damage. Um, so that, yeah, super successful uh, fight. Uh, flood tokens didn't get too out of hand. Well, definitely wasn't as bad as when my friends and I played. Um, but that, that, that's, that one's a lot of fun. That, yeah, that mechanically, I think that's still my favorite fight so far. Um, there's just a lot going on. There's a lot more decisions you have to make. It just feels a lot more tactical. Um, should have gone for the picnic at some point, but that's okay. Because um, we could have did it with Frigid and get multitasker done, but for another day. So that is going to be it for our second fight. That is another ruffian down. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and you want some more board game content. I did get a prototype for Encounters Shattered Wastes, so I'll do a playthrough of that on the channel, as well as, of course, we'll continue our Arkham Horror run. Um, my friends and I are actually almost done our Dunwich playthrough, um, so I, I did play a little bit ahead with my friends. Please don't kill me. Um, and, of course, we got some more fun things along the way. But thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you for the next fight.